Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at the Diamondback DB10 series. About two or three months ago we did a video on the DB15, which is their 5.56mm and 300 blackout line of rifles. Now, as I said back in, back in that video, if you're not familiar with it, uh, I was not familiar with Diamondback Firearms prior to that. Uh, I was contacted by Diamondback Firearms. They wanted me to write some armor's manuals for them. So uh, this was the first opportunity I had to take a look at these guns. And of course, doing an armor's manual, uh, you're taking these things apart, you're inspecting the parts, uh, and so forth. So you get a chance to really get in there and see how you know the quality of these these guns are. And when I got through, you know, doing the manual, looking through all the parts and everything, and I was very very impressed with what they have. Diamondback's one of the few manufacturers that does manufacture everything in house. Uh, all their major components are manufactured in house, which gives you a higher degree of control, which also leads you to a higher degree of quality and reliability and durability. So uh, I completed the 556 five, armors manual. The next one I was going to do was the the 10, uh, the the DB10 series. Uh, so these are the four rifles that I've, I took a look at and I, I used in the manual. And uh, I got a chance to go out and do some shooting with them to see what you know the quality of these was going to be. And I have to say they're about the same as the DB15s. They're extremely high quality. They're very, very reasonable price. Relatively little money. Uh, you're getting a very, very high quality rifle that you could start from the, from the, from the ground up, make your improvements or, or customize the hover you want to do it. So I think we're going we're to jump right in. The first rifle that we have here is what's referred to as their DB1065CB. This is their 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, as you know, their 6.5 Creedmoor has taken off like crazy. Uh, everybody is, is making them. The rifles uh, are showing incredible accuracy uh, and durability, reliability. I've had a lot of good luck with 6.5 Creedmoors recently. Uh, I had a Core 15, which I shot one MOA at 1,000 yards. Unfortunately, this one I didn't have the opportunity to shoot at that kind of a distance. We were shooting at 100 yards with it, and this was well under one MOA. Uh, the ammunition I was using was primarily the uh, the SIG uh, as well as some Barnes, and I also had, had some uh, Hornady. The ammunition is all, all that was uh, extremely accurate in this rifle. It was all reliable. I had no uh, malfunctions of any sort. So going through this thing from back to front. So looking at the front, we have a, a Diamondback muzzle brake. Pretty much every 6.5 Creedmoor I've seen does come with a muzzle brake on it. We have a stainless steel barrel here. This is a 20 inch fluted stainless steel barrel, uh, one 8 inch twist. And it does have a rifle length gas system on it. The bolt that we have in here is a high pressure bolt and, and firing pin, uh, which generally with the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor, most of the manufacturers are doing that right now. The hangar that we have here, or rail system, is, as you can see here, is a M-Lock. Uh, it's a 15 inch rail, and it's manufactured by Diamondback Firearms. Now, it's not a light rifle, you're looking at about 9.5 pounds here. Um, some of the features that we have on here is we have an ambidextrous safety, as you can see. We do have a forward assist fire cartridge case deflector, as well as ejection port cover. As you can see, we have our standard safety bolt catch. The stock cell we have on here is the Fab Defense GL shock stock, and we also have the Fab Defense pistol grip on here. Pistol grip is quite nice, I have to say. Um, it's got a very good feel to it. Optic I have on here is a SIG 4 to 16 by 44 Tango 4. I've been messing around with SIG optics for a few years now, uh, since they came out, and I am quite fond of them. This is an excellent rifle for uh, out to 500 yards, 600 yards, easy. Uh, you have a, a lighted reticle, uh, you have turrets on the top which make it easy for adjustments, and it's on a Geisley mount. And Geisley also probably manufactures some of the most precision mounts in the industry. Uh, I, on a lot of my precision rifles, I prefer to have those over anybody else's uh, mounts. Now for the price for this, for uh, the entire rifle you see minus the optic and the scope, you're only looking at uh, $1299, $1299. You know, a lot of the other ones I've looked at, you're looking well above the two to 3000 range. And for accuracy, you, you cannot beat it for, you know, for the price. So we're going to take this one to the range and we're going to fire a few shots. Next one we're going to look at here is the 308 pistol. Now, I, I'm going to be the first to admit, uh, I'm not fond of the pistol versions of these rifles. 
whether they're 556 or 308. The short barrel uh, it generally affects uh, reliability, and the muzzle blast is, is incredible, and you lose too much uh, velocity uh, and, and range with them. But there are people who really do like them, so like anything else, you you know, get your customers what they want. The barrel is 13.5 inches. It's manufactured from 4150 chrome alive vanadium steel with a 1 in 10-inch twist with a mid-length gas system. The muzzle brake you see on here is also a diamondback design and is a black nitride finished. The pistol brace here we have is manufactured by Shockwave. We have a hex mag grip on here. We do have an ambidextrous extra safety on here. As you see, we have a forward assist, a fire cartridge case deflector, ejection port dust cover. And if we flip over, you'll see we have this, you know, the same location for the safety as well as the bolt catch. This one comes in the flat dark earth finish. The weight on here is 7 pounds 1 ounce with an overall length of 31 and a quarter inches. Trigger is a standard mill spec. Now you have a MSRP of $1134, $1134 on this one. Now again, if, if you do like pistols, this is definitely an excellent rifle. I, you know, we fired uh, probably 200 rounds out of it and I had no malfunctions with it, but again, it's not as, as comfortable to shoot. And now we have the ruling from ATF where we are allowed to use the stock, uh, which is which is nice because before having to hold it like this was a lot more difficult uh, just because of that recoil and that muzzle blast. To get the range, we'll put a few rounds through it as well. Okay, the next rifle in the lineup is the DB-10 ELB. Now, what we have here is more of a tactical type rifle, more of a recce type, but with an 18-inch barrel. Barrel with a uh, manufacturer from 4150 stainless steel. It's got a mid-length gas system on it with a 1 in 10-inch twist. You have a standard A2 compensator on here as well. The grip is also a hex mag. Uh, we have forged upper lower receivers. We have uh, this particular one is black, which is my particular favorite. On the right side of the receivers here, you'll see we have a forward assist for a cartridge case deflector, as well as a protection port dust cover. Now, this bolt also has the uh, high pressure firing pin in it as well. All the bolt carriers that come in 308 will have the high pressure firing pins in them. So, the safety we have on here is a standard mill spec. Okay, starting in the front here, we have a standard A2 uh, compensator. The barrel is 18 inches and it's manufactured from 4150 stainless steel, it uses a mid length gas system. And the barrel is a 1 in 10-inch twist. The handguard we have here is a 15-inch handguard, also manufactured and designed by Diamondback. And you'll see this is this particular one is key mod. These are now also available in M-Lock. Free-floated. And the receivers, manufactured from forging the 775T6 aircraft aluminum. You'll see on the right side here we do have a forward bolt assist. We have a fire cartridge case deflector, injection port cover. Now the bolt on here also has a high pressure firing pin. All the 7.62 NATO and 6.5 Creedmoor bolt carrier groups all utilize the high pressure firing pin. Now this comes with a mil spec trigger in it as well. The thought of it is, is with the keeping the price down low, is you're going to be able to go out and, and purchase your own uh, type, you know, triggers that you would want or any of your accessories that you would want to customize this to how you would want it. By keeping that price down, you can save that money to put towards what you actually want to build the rifle out of. Now looking at the stock here, we have a, a hex mag stock. Very, very comfortable. Now the stock we have on here is is the excellent performance tack stock, six position. We have standard safety, bolt catch locations. Now the overall length of this is 35.75 inches with the stock collapsed. We have an MSRP of $1,099. Now this rifle here did shoot very, very well. You'll see I don't have any optics on here because I swapped around a lot of optics uh, for these four rifles. But uh, this probably is one of the most popular models that uh, the Diamondback does have. So then we're going to use our tickets to the range and we're going to fire a few shots.
Now, of all the models that we had here, this is my particular favorite. This is the Diamondback DB10 CKMB. Many of the components on these rifles are very, very similar. For instance, they all use the same upper and lower receiver. The handguards can vary. Uh, the barrels will, will generally be different for as far as length, uh, type of muzzle device on it. But they pretty much are the same. This one here I did some customization to. This is a particular rifle I did keep. Uh, I did put the Maya pistol grip on it. But the overall specification is going from the muzzle. This utilizes a standard etude style compensator. This is a 16 inch barrel manufactured of 4150 chromoly vanadium steel. It does have a mid-length gas system on it. And it does have a one turn and 10 inch right hand twist. The handguard is a 10 inch key mod stock, free float. Now again, uh, this one I did keep, this one will be getting this handguard replaced with it with a uh, M-lock. Like the others, the upper and lower receiver manufactured from forgings. Uh, you have the Injection port dust cover, you have the fire cartridge case deflector as well as the forward assist. And you have a standard mil, mil spec trigger and a standard safety. The stock on here is a, is a Roger stock. You know, overall the feel of this one is excellent. The optic that I have on here is a Tango 6 SIG, 1 to 6 by 24. This is primarily a uh, 308 type scope. This would be excellent out to four or 500 meters. Uh, you can go down to one and a half power, which is important, I think, for any kind of a tactical scope. Uh, because when you pull up to your, your eye, for your eye relief, this one here at one and a half power, you don't have to adjust your head. You can see, see very directly. You do have a lit horseshoe reticle on here as well. The weight of this is seven pounds, 15 ounces, not too heavy. Uh, the overall length uh, with the stock closed is 34.12 inches and extended is 37.31 inches. Now the MSRP on this one is only $959. Now that, for as far as a 308, is probably the best price in the industry. So you know, I tend to want to really know how well these things worked. Now this particular rifle, I probably have had nearly a thousand rounds through uh, over the last few months. Uh, I put a lot of a lot of rounds downrange with this thing, and I have to say, it's very, very, very nice. Uh, reliability has been 100 percent. The ammunition I've been using for all the 308s has been primarily the Black Hills uh, 177 grain OTM, 168 grain OTM, uh, the SIG 177 grain OTM, and I had also had some of the new SIG 150 grain full metal jacket. And uh, not one malfunction with any one of these rifles. For as far as magazines were concerned, some come with uh, C Products 308 magazines, some come with PMAGs. Um, during my testing, particularly with this model, with the amount of rounds I put through it, I've used everything from PMAGs to Lancer to DNH Tactical uh, to uh, Hexmag, you, you name it. Uh, I've pretty much fired all of them through it, and reliability has certainly been there. Now, the one thing I, I don't like about it, there's only one real critique I have, is you have to make sure that these handguards are, are on tight. If not, where these handguards are, they will, as you shoot, they will migrate forward. Uh, that was the only issue I had with this one as it came from the factory. Um, I guess it wasn't torqued down as much as it was supposed to be. And as, as I shot, they started to migrate forward to the point where I, I noticed there was a gap in here. So I got it down, I torqued it down pretty good, and I haven't had any problem with it since. But uh, as I said, the one thing I do plan on changing this is the handguard. I do want to get the, the M-Lock. Uh, I've definitely changed my mind for as far as uh, M-Lock versus key mod. The uh, key mod is a lot more difficult for me to use for as far as uh, putting on rail panels and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this from the range and we're going to fire a few rounds through this one as well. Now, my overall impressions of uh, Diamondback Firearms is, is actually very, very good. You know, they're different from like the LMT and Knights and places like that where, you know, they're not trying to, to put out a rifle that you can't afford. Uh, these guys here are putting out rifles that are within the average shooter's uh, probably grasp. You know, to have a 308 under $1,000 of this quality is, a, is, a, is an excellent price. And for as far as the quality of durability and reliability, uh, you know, I've shot all these rifles very, fairly extensively. And not one mal malfunction at all. Uh, the barrels have all been very, very good. The the rails also were all within good specifications as well. They're one of the problems I've been coming across occasionally uh, recently is uh, finding a lot of rails that are out of spec. Uh, and you can tell when you put a, a 1913 rail mount on there that's uh, put on with a throw lever and, and it rattles. A lot of the other scope mounts that you're just utilizing screws to tighten it down, you don't notice it as much, but uh, you do with the throw lever mounts. These are excellent rifles if you're looking for a rifle to start off with. 
Um, this is an excellent rifle for price and quality. If you're looking for a rifle that you can grow with, that uh, you can, as you get extra money, you can add a new stock to it, you can add a new trigger to it, you can add a new barrel to it. Um, this is a rifle that you certainly can build on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.